What do you think makes a good ball player? Um, I don't know. You don't know? As a young Tom Brady stumbles across the question of what makes a good ball player, what he doesn't know is that the answer to that question is something that he already possesses. From a young age, Tom Brady has expressed intangibles that have helped turn him into one of the greatest professional athletes to ever live. If there's one thing that Tom Brady hates more than anything else in the world, it's losing. But that's not something he developed on his journey of becoming a seven-time Super Bowl champion and the greatest football player of all time. It's something he was born with. His father was asked when he first saw that fire in his eyes emerge and had this to say. When we were on the golf course when he was five or six or seven years of age, we would compete and he would throw his club. I would discipline him and he would promise to never do it again. And he would do it the next time. It's in every fiber of his body. Although he's always possessed the desire to win at all costs, the physical tangibles are what held him back from being a blue chip recruit. A perfect spiral, freakishly accurate, and always making the right decision, these were the little things that flew right over the head of college recruiters. So what events occurred in his childhood and high school days that led him to where he is today? From an unwanted high school recruit, to an unwanted NFL prospect, to the winningest and most successful athlete in professional sports history. Growing up 20 miles south of San Francisco in San Mateo, California, Tom was a diehard 49ers fan as a kid. At the age of four, one of Tom's earliest memories was the 1981 NFC Championship game between the 49ers and Cowboys. The game turned out to be one of the greatest NFL games ever played, with Dwight Clark making a tremendous catch from Joe Montana in the back of the end zone to clinch the game. Although four-year-old Tom Brady had no idea what was happening, he would ironically witness a legendary moment that is still replayed time and time again today. But while Tom did have a love for football at a young age, he didn't spend a lot of time playing it. Tom was the youngest sibling of three sisters, all of which were great athletes themselves who made sure to put their younger brother in his place every chance they got. When it comes to where Tom got his competitive nature from, we don't have to look any further. They are all very competitive, and the mother may be the most competitive of all. She didn't want anyone to beat her in tennis. Tommy was the youngest of the family, so he got beat up by all his sisters. He was out there struggling and fighting to put his name on top somewhere. Not only did Tom get pushed around by his sisters, he didn't know how to take L's. I was a very poor sport. I just remember taking the remote and slamming it down over and over. You know, I think, I remember punching a hole in a wall in our house. Yeah, it wasn't, it was for a different reason. But uh, but yeah, it wasn't that was that wasn't a video game for most. One day we were going up to see the Jock play with my uh, little league baseball team, and we went up and played nine holes before the game started. And about the sixth hole, I hit a crap bad shot, and I took up and I just started slamming into the ground. And my dad took me off the course, brought me to the car. He said, "If you ever do that ever again, you know you're never coming up here, never playing." And from throwing golf clubs as a 7 year old to slamming his helmet on the sidelines as a 43 year old, you've truly come a long way Tommy. The competitive fire wasn't something that instantly translated to football throughout his childhood as baseball was his primary sport growing up. Going into high school, Brady hadn't played a down of football and was already a standout catcher at that point in time. He recalls that going into his freshman year, he didn't even know how to put the pads in his football pants. All he knew about football was to take the snap from the center and throw to the open receiver. That fall of his freshman year, he was so inexperienced that he was the backup quarterback on the freshman team that finished with an 0-8 record. But in baseball, Brady was turning into a dominant high school player. Out of high school, he was selected in the 18th round by the Montreal Expos, and pro baseball scouts had no doubt in their mind that Brady's excellence would have easily translated to the big leagues. I think he could have been one of the greatest catchers ever. I know that's quite a statement, but the projections were based on the fact that we had a left-handed hitting catcher with arm strength and who was athletic. But his first love was football. Even though he had all the potential in the world as a baseball player, he couldn't help but be drawn to football. Brady would constantly find ways to improve as a high school quarterback and ended up getting the starting job on varsity as a junior. 
But when it came to the recruiting process for Tom Brady as a football player compared to baseball, he wasn't having the same luck. After showing off great arm strength, tremendous decision making, on top of being an admirable leader and always getting the most out of his teammates, colleges weren't knocking on his door. Instead, Tom had to throw himself out there for programs to see his tape and give him any chance to play at a big time college like he knew he was capable of. The unwavering confidence that he had in himself was what would help carry him to finally get noticed by a few big time programs toward the end of his senior football season. I guess there were more highly recruited prospects, but Tommy never had any doubt about his abilities. While other people may have, he never worried about the measurables he didn't have. He knew he had the whole package. He truly had the heart of a lion and he wanted to compete. He never felt as if he was sitting in the second chair to anybody else. After sending out his tapes to 50 plus schools and having a dominant senior year, there were only five colleges that showed any interest. Out of those five schools, only one of them actually paid Brady a visit and took the next step in wanting him to come play for their school. University of Michigan assistant Bill Harris is the only recruiter that visited Tom Brady in high school, which gained that extra trust he needed to make his decision on a school. This man has got to be given more credit. Out of the countless recruiters that reviewed his footage, Harris was the only one who noticed something different in Brady and felt that he had to take the trip out to San Mateo to meet him. We all know what happened next for Brady as he climbed the depth chart at Michigan as a sixth string quarterback to become one of their best in the school's history. It was more of the same for him at Michigan when it came to scouts as nothing jumped out on the page physically, causing him to be a below average prospect compared to the other quarterbacks drafted. For a man who has looked past time and time again, those same intangibles that carried him from a young age is one of the main reasons why we're witnessing a 43 year old dominate the league in a way that nobody has ever seen. It's safe to say that we will never see this again I, I think some people are born with the you know great height some people are born with um, great size you know great speed you know and some people are born with other things that I would say are more intangible and I think competitiveness and the ability to compete has been a great attribute for me and it started when I was when I was young I just grew up that way and I still feel that way now I think People would think you're, you're 41. What are you, you know, what are you doing? And I still am shooting for the stars, and I'm doing something I love to do. So, give me some of your thoughts on Tom Brady down below, and if you guys think he's gonna win an eighth Super Bowl. He just signed a one-year extension, so he's gonna be playing in Tampa for at least another two seasons. The dude's gonna be 45 years old by that time, and I don't see any reason as to why his production would dramatically fall off after what we just saw last season. A lot of people say it gets old watching him win over and over, but watching one of the best pro athletes of all time still doing this at 43 years old, it's tough not to root for him. The guy is a walking legend, so try to soak in every last moment of it. As always, if you guys enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like button and interact in the comments down below, but any kind of support from you guys is truly appreciated. I really enjoyed making this video and I'm psyched to be producing content for you guys again. I promise I'm not going anywhere soon. With that being said, don't be shy to fire away in the comments for suggestions for future videos or things I can do to improve the quality of my videos. I know the views aren't where they should be right now, but give us a little time till YouTube figures out we're back. It's gonna make it that much more rewarding for the ones who are with me right now to see where we end up months from now. I truly appreciate even the small support at this point guys, it's gonna be a long way to the top. With all that being said, thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you guys next time.